When looking at the musicals that made the genre popular in the 60s, we have the usual names that pop up. Mary Poppins, Oliver, My Fair Lady, The Sound of Music, West Side Story. However, despite some incredible successes, there's a reason the movie musical floundered in the 70s and did not really make a major comeback until the early 2000s. The reason for that is because of Camelot, a big screen version of the successful stage musical that Warner Brothers was banking a lot on. But the result was a boring lead weight of a movie. Anybody who manages to sit through three hours of this deserves a medal of some kind. This actually had a lot of potential, with songs from Learning Low, the team behind My Fair Lady, respected actors like Richard Harris and Vanessa Redgrave, and a musical that was widely renowned on stage. This was a classic movie in the making. However, when transferring the play to film, it seemed to not realize that the limitations on stage are not there when making a movie. Scene changes that would be impossible on stage can be done easily with the power of editing. And with its three hour running time, you can even expand and develop the characters more. But alas, the biggest problem with Camelot is it breaks one of the major rules of screenwriting. Show don't tell. While King Arthur talks a lot about his bravery and his childhood, we never actually see it. Hearing him talk about pulling the sword from the stone would be so much more powerful if the director had done a flashback and shown this miraculous event. Instead, watching him sing exposition about that event is making me want to put on the sword in the stone. And this continues through the rest of the runtime. Talking and singing about the deeds committed by Arthur, rather than actually showing why he's so brave and a great king, makes for a lot of boring sequences. It does not help that the songs are utterly forgettable. I honestly couldn't hum one tune from Camelot if I tried. Learn and Low can do memorable work. Even with Rex Harrison speak singing his songs in My Fair Lady, they still stuck in my head. These are just some of the dullest and most unmoving songs I've heard in a movie musical. That they hardly do much to develop the characters just adds to the boredom. Maybe if the film's director, Joshua Logan, had livened things up in the choreography and camera work, this would have been more interesting. But he makes some odd filmmaking decisions. There are times when the cinematography is quite good. And then there are moments where the camera is right up in the actors' faces for no reason. A lot of the choreography in the musical numbers also tends to consist of the actors standing, and doing more standing, and more standing, oh, and kneeling, and sitting. Even the rare number with dancing is so boringly choreographed and weirdly shot. As for the story, there's a real lack of one. When I see your movie as three hours, I better see a lot of story and scope and character to justify such a massive length. However, Camelot mostly revolves around not on the grand legends of King Arthur, but on a love triangle between him, Guinevere, and Lancelot. Maybe this would have been interesting as we see Arthur tackling with choosing between his friend and his wife, but most of it is handled with, that's right, a lot of exposition. The plot even throws in an illegitimate son, but all that does is bloat the running time some more. The whole affair is handled in the most one-dimensional way, with none of the characters coming up as particularly dynamic. There's room for stirring battles, but no, let's deal with Arthur moping and Guinevere swooning over the two of them. Then there's the acting, and I could not find a good performance in this mess, despite the pedigree involved. Richard Harris is usually a very good actor, and he will always be my favorite Dumbledore. But his acting is so hammy and broad, and frankly, I don't think he's that good of a singer. While maybe not on the level of Pierce Brosnan, his voice still left a lot to be desired. Vanessa Redgrave is also usually very good, but here her acting comes across as stiff and unnatural, though she's not held by the writing and directing. I never quite understood why Arthur and Lancelot fell for her, since he lacked any personality both in the acting and in the script. And then there's Frank Nero as Lancelot. Now, a lot has been made about an Italian playing a Frenchman. Now, I think actors can play other nationalities. Italians could play Frenchmen. 
except Nero is completely unconvincing in the role. He doesn't even do his own singing, and it's painfully obvious. In the original Broadway production, the main roles were played by Richard Burton, Julie Andrews, and Robert Goulet. All I can say is, talk about a missed opportunity. Are there things to compliment in Camelot? Well, the sets and costumes are really well done, and so I cannot say the Academy Awards that won in those categories were undeserving. Otherwise, I found little to like here. The funny thing is, Jack Warner, the then head of Warner Brothers, was banking on Camelot being his swan song. At the same time, he had Bonnie and Clyde coming out, and he thought it wouldn't make a nickel. In the end, Camelot tanked, was long forgotten, and doesn't even find itself on lists of the best musicals. Bonnie and Clyde is now considered one of the greatest films ever made, and helped launch the new Hollywood era. Frankly, in terms of musicals about the Arthurian legend, I find Spamalot to be far more entertaining with much better songs. Watching Camelot, I so wanted them to dance when they're able, do routines and chorus scenes with footwork impeccable. See you next time.